What is happening, guys? This is Logan Robinson from Here the Spirit, presented to you by Noel Game Day. We are here for our instant reaction, gentlemen. Once again, Florida State falls. No win yet in the season. Getting close to uh, the end of September, Florida State falls to Wake Forest, 35-14. to No score, uh, no points were scored in the second half by Florida State. Um, a lot of mistakes, a lot of penalties, another ugly game from Florida State's performance-wise. But with me this evening, Nate Greer, lead recruiting insider at the top. Austin Vizi, who was in attendance for this game. Down there, our lead basketball writer down there. He's getting ready for basketball season. I think we all are. And D. Lou Dustin, been working his tail off, lead writer and editor at NoelGameDay.com. Gentlemen, we are here once again. Wow. Wow. I, I, it's, it's unbelievable. It, it really is unbelievable where we're at in the state of the program, where we're questioning every single person in this program. Totally oh, through it. Oh, and three for the first time since 1976, which I think is going to be talked about probably a lot this week. 45 um, years. You know, so Florida State is in trouble. And uh, I, I, I think you got to look at Norvell. You have to look at the, uh, the coordinators. You got to look at positional coaches. You have to look at players. This isn't just one, one, one segment of the program. This is just an all-encompassing issue i mean the, the players got to execute better the coaches got to put their team in better positions um I, I you know we'll probably talk about it here in a little bit but it, it's it's time to make a change man like like there's got to be something's not clicking and, and, and all, all that positive effort and the grit the, the drive to to perform in that notre dame game is gone like where is that team at so, I mean, so heck, where, all of the old habits are back. Where was Florida State this weekend? You know, because we talked about it on, on Wednesday night. We wanted to see if this team was going to show up and play with some backbone and, you know, just be pissed off after the worst loss in school history. And, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of thought early on, all right, maybe they are. Sidney Williams gets that interception on the first drive for Notre Dame. You're like, okay, you got something positive here. Two plays later, you lose a fumble. Wake Forest goes deep. Jerry Jones gets beat down the sideline, looked just like the Jacksonville State play just about, except the receiver was even more wide open. And, I mean, from there, that was the story of the game. You know, the defense continuing to give up a ton of big plays, the offense creating basically nothing for, for a ton of drives. I think the final play count. I think someone's TV's on real quick. Sorry. He's kind of in the background there just for a second. Final play count, 89 to 51 is, in Wake Forest's favor. <laughs> Wake Forest, 39 minutes, time of possession. The defense was on the field all day. So, I mean, yeah. just, an, just an absolute failure. And, Logan, you mentioned that no points in the second half, and we're starting to see that issue we kind of saw last year where Florida State didn't score in the second half. I think it was the Notre Dame game, um, the Louisville game. And same thing here. You know, you've got, you've got three points in your last two second halves after that comeback against Notre Dame. So, yeah, really nothing positive to take away from today. And – like, I feel bad for the defensive line because they're the only ones playing with any kind of energy. And then they get a third down and they give up a 10-yard slant route or a linebacker would be in the wrong spot and, and misplay a pass. We, we, they were getting killed on slant routes in the first half. It was just over and over. Wake Forest just they, – they run that read option trap where if they can tuck it off and still get five, six yards on a run or, or they get an easy slant pass and – the corners are just playing outside the wide receiver the whole time, letting them inside. It was just embarrassing from start to finish. And, and you look at it going into halftime, it's realistically two plays away from being a close game. If mm -hmm. if you take away the roughing the punter, which was idiotic, and the the first fumble from Corbin, which he just literally just lost the ball. No one forced it. He just lost it. You take away uh, those two, it, you take away those two plays, it's a close game. Was uh, from my angle, it was not yeah, yeah. It looks like a guy just lost it. A guy got his hand in. It, it, it was a good play by the by the defender. It's like it, it, you take away those two plays because you have momentum after after that turnover, mm -hmm. and then just immediately give it back. Just suck the life out of the team. You could see it. No, so, what I didn't like was I know they run that 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 slow match point stuff, and you know I, I thought it really overall I agreed the defensive line had a good game, but you know they could have done better in terms of. of 
control that line of scrimmage because they were hesitating, allowing Wake Forest to create those lanes. You know, even, you know, the line... I was talking about this on the Mark Rogers post game. I, I just think that Adam Fuller's defense is easy to scheme against if they're not there. You go here. It's it's, it's really A or B. It's really, it's five hundred yards. A, it's, it's A or it's A or B, and he cannot adjust off A or B. Like if you're killing him for A, like he can't fix that. Oh well, if you go to B, he can't fix that either. It, 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 it and therein lies a, a major problem. I'm sure you know, I don't want to get ahead of, of what the, you know, our rundown is, but it, it it's time for change, man. Like it's time for a lot of change, the, the, uh, on, on both coaching and on the personnel. There, there are two plays that stuck out to me. We just put it in one of them in the comments. The fourth and mm. two quarterback draw with Milton. Just that's horrible. Like that's one of the worst play calls I've ever seen. Like, like the fact you can't get two it. yards. It's overthinking. I think it. Oh yeah, they're not going to expect him to run it. He, he probably like, runs. He probably runs like a six two forty. I think Justin can beat him right now. It kind of looked like play- a broken play almost. Yeah, kind of. Like, it's like Milton they just got the snap, and then he looked kind of confused and just tried to run it. But I mean, regardless, you know, it's inexcusable to get down into the red zone and then make those kind of mistakes. And even still, the guy that got you to that point, Treshawn Ward, he had two back to back big plays. You immediately take him out, put in Corbin, who's stuffed on third down. And then you have that play Both with Milton. Plays. So I just, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't get the rotations. And it goes back to the quarterbacks. I don't even think we've talked about that yet. First four drives of the game, you have a different quarterback each drive. Milton drive one, Travis drive two, Milton, Travis. Then Travis finally comes back in, drive five, is the first quarterback to lead a back-to-back drive that game. You finally think you've got some stability there. Bang, he gets hurt to start the third quarter, and Milton comes back in. So, I mean, it's just the same thing that we've seen over these first two games, like, and, and we said it the other day, you know, they really need to decide on, on a quarterback so that the offense can get in some rhythm. Yeah. I did that. Yeah, there's got to be a pure number one quarterback. Uh, like I, this is the old school mantra that you got two quarterbacks, you don't, you don't have one. And Florida State, I, I don't understand the rotation like we talked about in the podcast earlier this week and also in last week's post game. I don't understand – the constant rotation of positions, man. You got to let your guys get a flow and get it, you know, get into the game. And a guy like Trishon Warlock, like Dustin said, was running really well. You take him out when he's got two big runs in a row, so he's hot. I don't, I don't get it, man. That's where I really question the play calling. I question, uh, you know, I question Dillingham and Norvell. Um, but the starting point for me is the defense, man. You know, they still another thirty-five point game that. Last year was the worst statistically in FSU history, and here we are again. Um, it's time to go, Fuller. Okay, you I'm, can't give up 500 yards to Wake Forest and not no. expect something. No, the, 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 the one the one the, defensive play that stuck out, like obviously there was the big touchdowns, but there, there was a play mm-hmm. where Jarvis Brownlee got beat deep. Yep. And he got mossed over, but he's playing on the back side of the receiver – Hey, like, what are you doing in that spot that you can't contest from there? And like, at that point, something's got to happen. You, you can't keep allowing this to happen. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I refuse to believe that these guys are all bust and not talented. You know, most of these guys on defensive backfield were heavily recruited by every school in the country. And, and now they, they have poor technique and, you know, the, the mental part is shot. And that's why I think a coaching change would help. Be, you know, even if it's just, I'm not the biggest Randy Shannon fan, and that that's where we'd be going with it. I, I you know, I think it would be him stepping in that role. But there has to be some better connection with with the players and how they're how it's being taught, how it's being called, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, we see it at, since last year, and again now we've seen it this year. The DB is just not in the right position to make a play. And that's coaching. Yeah, like you said, I mean, it's been the same thing for the first 12 games of the Mike Norvell era. You know, consistently, Mm -hmm. the defensive backs, they're blowing coverages, they're giving up catches, they're in position to make plays and not doing so. At this point, you just, you need to make a change for the sole purpose of shaking something up. I mean, show these players that, you know, poor performances cost you your job. You know, and I mean, the same thing with some of the players. I think they some of the guys need to be benched or 
they shouldn't be starters anymore. Like mm-hmm. show them when you mess up they're, they're, you know, you're going to be held accountable. And yeah, I mean, I don't think Randy Shannon has been in Mike Norvell's back pocket for no reason. You know, I, I think he really wanted mm-hmm. to give Fuller a shot and it's just the same issues and, and there's got to be a change. Well, listen, I don't think, you know, I know a lot of people are commenting about Norvell. Force is not going to make a change there. One, they can't. <laughs> they can't. can't two, afford to. Two, it would be stupid for a lot of reasons. One, monetarily. Two, you will get no coach worth their weight to come here if you're going to fire him after two years. So that's not going to happen. But I do think that the coordinator position is up for grabs. I think that should be discussed. And, and you know, one thing that excited me about Norvell coming in was his, his coaching tree. He has a lot of good coaches that – that you know were hit, were assistance for him, so he he has a good eye overall. So it, it, something's got to change with this team, and, and the defense is just it's cheeks, man. The uh, yeah, missed tackles all the time, and I felt like made uh, made Wake Forest running back. Look, uh, Buell Smith made him look like Marshawn Lynch. I mean, he would just break through the D line there, and then it'd just be easy money for him to get through the linebacker mm-hmm. because once again, you don't see Florida State line, Florida State's linebackers for the majority of games, and it happened again where he's just able to <clears throat> make things look easy and make him look like a Heisman uh, nominee. I mean, it's just ridiculous how this defense can make anybody look really great. Um, you know, Brownlee had an up and up and down. It's like a roller coaster for him throughout a game. Um, it was down. That, yeah, he had one good pass deflection. <laughs> Other than and, that. He got it was just cool. yeah, just inconsistency beyond beliefs there. Uh, I think time Brownlee, for, time for a younger yeah. rotation to get yeah. in, and I, I don't know what the I don't. I'm really shocked we haven't seen more of Knowles. Maybe even Tay jumping in there in the mix because we heard some things about him I mean, in practice this week. But Brian Brown, we Brock, Michael like, Dotson was yeah, what are we ever targeted? Yeah, I'm just wondering what the weight is. What what's the weight here? Um, but Ward is number one running back for me. That just solidified that. Uh, he is everything that we heard of since the spring and fall camp. He is the best running back in the on the team. And Corbin's your number two. Keep them I both on the field. Team, yeah. When Ward when Ward is on the field, that team is moving down the field. But then, like Dustin, you mentioned before, why are you taking him off the field when you're nearing the red zone? That makes zero sense. That is one of the silliest things. It's as close as whenever you're running screens with Jordan Wilson off to the side. Why are you taking your best running back off the field? It doesn't make any sense. It's almost like you're just trying to give playing time and tell recruits that, hey, you got three, four running backs. We're giving everybody playing time. F it. The best players play, keep them in there. It's mm-hmm. idiotic and it's embarrassing. He only had six attempts and then he had three catches, but only six rushing attempts and he t- turned those into 48 yards. Mm-hmm. Like does, he's got to get touches at this point. He, he's got to get the most touches out of anybody. He should be starting. He should be starting against so Louisville. He I, should be starting. I, I felt that FSU had to control the line of scrimmage. Um, and, you know, one reason why I thought they could pull it out, why I thought, why I pre- thought they could win. Because I thought they'd be able to run the ball well, and I, I don't have the stats in front of me. How many rushes did they have total? Did they have 20, 25 maybe? The twenty nine attempts 29. for ninety two yards. Not a couple of those are sacks, but yeah, yeah, not enough, not enough. They had to run the ball 40, 45 times to control that line of scrimmage, control the pace of the game. You know, for an offense that had ninety plays, ninety. It's just asinine. And they had the ball for 40 minutes. I bet you only had the ball for 20 minutes. You're not going to win any game. Six turnovers, having the ball for one-third of the game. I mean, <laughs> Six what, turnovers. What, what do you expect, man? And then all the constant rotation. It's just, you know. Six. It, it, the coaches have to ask questions. Oh, and, duh. And, oh and, yeah. Beyond belief, yeah. And, and you know. Four State fans are upset and they're pissed off about where we are as a program. Um, and it, it's very frustrating that Florida State now, you know, Dustin was adding it up as what, 14 and what in the last f- four years? 14 and 25, I think. 14 and 25 in four years. Like, I never thought I'd see that for FSU football. Now, this is the worst in the last decade for me. You know, this is just bad football. And it's not like they don't have talent on the team, man. Like, this team is better than last year. 
and they're playing worse than last year. And that's when it comes down to the coaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does seem. I want to talk about offensive coordinator because it seems like Dylan Ham has been continuously. He's the one calling these plays up there in the box, but it, that's, that has to swap for Louisville. Norvell mm -hmm. has to go back and be the play caller for, for Florida State moving forward, or there's no hope. Am I wrong? No, Dillingham needs to be your eyes in the sky, but Norvell needs to call the plays. Yeah. 100%. 100%. It, it, it's, if he wants to salvage anything, I know, I know he's got an overall program view and he wants to not be whatever, but if he if there's any salvage to this season, he has to take over the play calling because it's just awful. Like there's no rhyme or reason to it. Like you watch these other teams, like I'm sitting here watching Georgia versus South Carolina, and, and you can watch how they're setting things up. You know, they you know, if if anyone's watching it, you know, they in, ends up guy running wide open down the scene for a touchdown. You know, th there's rhyme and reason to it. They're setting things up. They're putting your positions to take advantage of you. Here's like, they're just throwing shit at a wall and, and, and we'll see what happens. And it's not even just the play calling, man. I mean, they've got to figure out these rotations out on both sides of the ball. You can't just be switching quarterbacks out, running backs, just constantly. You got to let guys, you know, get into a rhythm, let them build some confidence and then go out there and make some plays, but just, I don't know, the constant switches, you know. The last two weeks have really been kind of the first time I've started to question what the heck is going on here. Can, can, I, can I ask you guys a question? Go ahead. Um, do you think that the McKinsey Mountain experiment is, is, is reached its peak already? Um, and by that I mean, you know, you can tell he's very limited with his mobility. Um you know, his, his velocity is a lot different than what it was before. Um, you know, he's not the same player, which you can't expect him to be. Um, but it should he be the, should he be the quarterback if he's healthy? I, I just don't think the team is good enough around him. The, the wide receivers yeah. aren't getting enough separation. The line's right. not blocking enough for him. You know, if, yep. if there's talent, like if, if his receivers are Kelvin Benjamin or Rashad Green, yeah, you can stick him out there. But he's, mm -hmm. there's no one to throw to, and at this point, with, with his knee, he's a risk out there every single down. Uh, I, but, I I really feel for the kid, but I I, I think you got to go young. Put put in Shubba, put in somebody. I mean, yeah, I was gonna he, say it's hard to even go to Travis at this point because you yeah. know we we've seen him get banged up multiple times this season. You know, in the mm -hmm. Notre Dame game, he had to go out. Milton came in. Um, this game, you know, he took that huge hit at the end of the first half was holding his shoulder in, in the first quarter, and then he came off in the third, and Milton replaced him. But, you know, I mean, we talked about Chubb, Do you go Chubb Purdy because he can run it and throw? I mean, you know. I, I guess. I think that's got to be discussed, <laughs> you know. I mean, that's got to be talked about. You know, I, I, I think, you know. I, You're I think mute, Mil Logan. I think Milton's mind is uh, definitely there. Like, you can tell, like, like he gets it. But I, I just don't know if, it, if he's there to hold up a whole game. Yeah, I don't know either. I just don't know. Yeah, Milton, I I don't know. I, I think a mix of also swapping both of them in and out is messing up hit any kind of rhythm that he could have because, of course, he's mm -hmm. a game manager and he plays really well when it comes into big-time pressure. And, you know, he did that against Notre Dame. But, you know, Jordan Travis was playing really well in this game and the offense was working. But the thing with him, he just can't stay healthy throughout the game. And that's what mm -hmm. stinks about it. You know, he was doing well. He made some some throws. He was running kind of decent. It seemed like sometimes I hate it. I, I don't hate it, but I don't like it whenever he's doing the whole double hands on the ball and we're running, you know, five, 10 yards. I'm like, can we tuck it? That might help you a little bit, which you could somebody out. You know, this right here is going to ruin your like speed and everything. Anyways, that's just something merit to that. But Jordan Travis was the best quarterback on Florida State team tonight. But, you know, moving forward, I don't know. We, we've heard I good things I, about Chubba. The what? I don't, I don't think that's saying much to well, today. Man, well, I mean, you know? it was man, we good. talked about this quarterback battle all off season, and it has just um, turned into a complete disappointment for. It's for just both not of even them. over. It doesn't um, seem like it's and, over. And, and, and one thing we haven't talked about yet either is um, 
you know, one thing that we talked about leading up to this uh, this season was I think we all felt like the first five of the offensive line was, was pretty solid. Um, you know, uh, probably maybe the best since 2015-16. Um, but we also talked about how this team can't afford injuries. And so you have Robert Scott banged up today, which forces uh, – Darius Washington, who I thought, who I think's played pretty well this year. I, I, I think he's had a really good start to the season, but that puts Brady Scott at um, right tackle, which we've seen um, not bode well. Um, and then Baby and Johnson goes out for a couple plays, and, and Darius Washington slides into center. But this team can't afford to, to get banged up on the offensive line, and, and I think that's changed some of the things too. With what what they what they've tried to do, you know, Wake, Wake Forest went after um, Brady Scott today. They went after Scott and they went after Brownlee. Like mm -hmm. they just kept targeting those two players on both sides yes. of the ball. Yes, per so so if they were if they didn't hand it off, they went to the to the uh, slant route, which was killing Brownlee, and, and it was killing Jones, or or they and Jamie they, Robinson. Yep, or they ran it up the gut, and and like we all saw it. Like adjust to it, fix it, change your alignment, do something. Like at what point do you play zone? Like they, they just <laughs> played man to man across the board and didn't get out of it. At what point mm -hmm. do you not go zone and just take away the slants? I didn't, I didn't think it was that hard, but they just mm -hmm. refused to do it. And I'd like. Obviously, we don't have the stats in front of us as far as like who gave up what, but it felt like Brownlee gave up 160 yards. Brownlee, he, he's just got, he's got to go to the slot. He's yeah. just a much better slot player. He's not an outside mm -hmm. corner. And, and I, you know, I think Brownlee, the mentality of what Brownlee has, he has to be on the field because he's, you know, just the physicality, just that having that dog mentality. Um, but I, I agree. I just don't know if he's an outside corner uh, on a full time basis. And I liked him as a as a slot guy, and that kind of negates Jamie Robinson, who had a tough second half last week and had a ton of loafs and didn't play well today. So, you know, he, you have a chance for that. You brought in depending on being a contributor, and he he, he hasn't lived up to the billing and. You know, I, I think it's time you you look at the future and slide a guy in that played it last year, and play a Washington or a, or a Cooper, or do you slide a Renardo Green back down in, 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 into a corner position? Like, it's, it, you got to figure it out. I think you got to look at all options. I just want to see some changes by Monday, man. You know, I don't yeah. care if it's on the coaching staff. I don't care if it's the next depth chart that comes out. Show me that you're not just going to live with these results and, and these players and these coaches, and you're going to actually go out, change something, and you know, just try and switch it up. You got to have get, you got to inject, you know, a bolt of energy somewhere because you know, to be realistic, it's very close to this season just going to the complete wayside if it hasn't already. It you know, you got Louisville it coming is. in next Saturday. We talked about this potentially being a must-win game. Louisville is absolutely a must-win game. I mean, you go to 0-4, you know, the team uh, is going to continue to have this negative momentum. They're going to continue to quit. And, you know, we got the fans in the comments. The fans are going to continue to to get more angry with the situation, and this thing's just going to bubble over. And the next, the next catalyst is, you know, losing recruits because they're seeing the product on the field as well, and it, it's not pretty. No, and, yeah, I was already looking ahead at Louisville, but say, the thing um, with Louisville is with, with that quarterback, he can just torch you on the ground. We, we haven't had forty-two points last night. Yeah. yeah, he could just he could torch you on the ground, and we don't have the linebackers to cover for that. So that's going to be a nightmare so, trying to figure that out. But so, 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 like, like Dustin said, something's got to change by Monday. So, so real quick, you look at the you look at the schedule. There's only two for sure wins. I think Syracuse and UMass. I'm, just, else, I'm not calling Syracuse a for sure win. You're out of your mind. Syracuse is horrible. I'm not either. It's not, not even we. UMass. <laughs> We're terrible, Listen. too. I'll, I'll consider UMass a guaranteed win. Syracuse scored 63 points today. Has Florida State scored 63 points That's all season? That's great. Who did they play? No. 
a team that could probably beat Florida State. Did they play <laughs> imaginary school of, of the St. Mary Vincent, whoever? I don't care if they played Colgate. <laughs> 63 so, points is 63 points. We just lost uh, to Jacksonville State. What, is, what does it matter? Like, yeah. <laughs> so, so, like, you know, recruits see things differently, and I've said this before, you know, they, they look at things like, well, I could be the guy to make the play. I could be the guy that changes it. But if this continues, there's going to be decommitments. It's going to happen. But they, excuse me, they got to keep the core together. They got to keep the the Hunters, the McCalls, the Duffies, the Saps, you know, offensive linemen. They got to keep that core together. And, and you know, if those rumored um, silent commitments that they have, you know, if they can stick those, you still have a good class to build to the future. You know, this is a four year on the low end rebuild. You're looking at 2024, 2023, 2024 to really be. I mean, FSU fans, what do you think competitive is? ACC championship, right? Mm, I don't yeah. know how close. I don't know how close FSU is to that. I think 2024, you're competing <laughs> for. I can't even think that. Can I? <laughs> ACC championship. I can't even think to that. I can't even think to that. No, but you know what I'm saying? Like, as FSU fans, we're used to like being competitive as competing for the ACC title yeah. and, and, and oh. national championships. Right now, we got to worry about as fans competing for bowl bids. So you look at 2014, or sorry, 2024, as being a solid bowl team. I don't even think you look at that far down the road and, and even consider to be an ACC title contender. Not with the way that North Carolina is recruited at quarterback and uh, uh, on defense. You know, Clemson is going to still do you know do Clemson things. I don't worry about Miami. You know that they're just in a rough state like FSU is. Um, it, it's just I'm concerned about the future, man. As a Florida State fan, I'm concerned. Well, and you mentioned the recruiting, but you know it gets to a point. With these losses piling up, recruits look at it and I mean, and then it's just too bad of a scenario yep. to come in and rebuild. I mean, you know, a lot of these recruits, you know, they they've said that they're they're steady in their commitments and stuff so far, but you get to zero and five, zero and six, zero and seven. They went away. What are, what are they saying then? Mm -hmm. It's it's not going to be as easy to overcome, obviously. And nope. You know, you mentioned those silent commitments, Nate. You know, we'll see. We'll see if those hold on. It's it's not good times right now to, because to get out of this hole, you're going to need to bring in young talent that you can develop. Yeah, they and need those guys. Like when you're losing, it's hard to it's hard to do that. And, and, obviously, and, and like we're we're in a cycle right now, as, as like this team is so young and dependent on either transfers or the young young guys, I think this team is, like you look at next year and the class that's coming in with some of the high-hanging high fruit that they could possibly land, they're going to be immediately dependent on. So you still have a young team, this team that has no real strong leadership, and you're not going to build that by hitting the portal every year. You need those freshmen that turn into juniors in two years and are, are your leaders of the team. And... Right now, folks facing a cycle of not having that leader leader led team. They just don't have it. No. And yeah. I'm I'm just I'm just wondering. You know, there won't be anybody in the stadium. Maybe that's kind of will be a wake up call for this team. There won't be anybody in the stadium this next Saturday. Um, not the, I think I, I think it'll be about fifty thousand people. I don't think that many Louisville fans are going to show up, Nate. <laughs> I mean, you know, college uh, kids will go to it. They'll show up. No, they won't. I was no, gonna say you. They'll show up drunk and stay there for the first quarter, and then go do whatever they want to do. There's I always, wouldn't. There's always parents. There's always people like me who've been 
Long time Forest Hit fans yeah. that just want to be a part of the atmosphere. Well, that's go like to a I college mean, game. But. I'll go to a football. Yeah, I'll go watch football like that. I'll be there. I mean, it's a mix of going to cover it and also be there because I just love football games and attending them. But <clears throat> for fans that are in complete letdown mode at zero and zero oh and three to start off the season, it's why would they waste time to come travel here? Waste money. Uh, even go, even leave your house. Yeah. Like I, I, I mean, I haven't I mean, had I'm, time yet to see it. But did anyone? Read or, or hear what Norvell said after the game. I watched just a tiny little bit before we went live here. What, what was he saying? Uh, just, was last week, got to coach him better. A mix, yeah, a mix of that. I didn't get the little. Basically, said it rolls from the top, or it's one hundred percent on him, or starts at the top. I don't know. Same coach speak that that we've been hearing. Yeah. yeah, and when we heard that last week, but nothing changed this upcoming week. That's the that's the really scary thing. No, Florida State's not going to move on from Mike Norvell, but I think he lost everything that he did all over the off season. That was fun. That was great while it happened. The whole everything, the PR was great this whole off season, but that is bye-bye. out the window. That is Ganos. No one gives a flying f now about what happened during this off season, and as they should. I mean, fans. They, they, they should deserve to feel this way. And that was uh, it's a complete letdown. And whenever you're calling these crazy plays from McK- uh, we already talked about it, but the, Mc- the McKenzie Milton plays I've never seen. I've someone I felt like maybe like, I don't know. I'm not going to say anything more. I'm not going to say anything more. I'm not going to try to get in trouble tonight. Uh, Damn, Austin, it just sucks. Austin, how bad was it in person seeing that play? <laughs> um, well, let's see. I left with a sunburn. Uh, the <laughs> drunken fan who was back for me was asking for Tate Rodemaker. Oh, uh, God. Uh, oh, that oh, is Lord. not held that far. <laughs> and then by the time I was holding my 53 days until basketball season signed up, everyone was just laughing. So, you know, it was one of those days. Yeah. Well, Florida State, let's look at the schedule moving forward. Florida State's going to have Louisville come visit this upcoming weekend. After that, uh, 50 50 at best. Yep. Syracuse, Syracuse. And you got Except- UNC. W for Syracuse. I think Carolina, we thought would be a competitive game. That you know, they're still gonna be mad about last year. That game's gonna be fifty to nothing yeah. at, at UNC. I don't, know, I don't know if you see Sam Howe. Last time I saw, he was four for five for 185 yards and three touchdowns tonight. Yeah, you're, you're, you're looking at a smarter quarterback <laughs> yeah. by a mile than what you faced. Four uh, of five for 180 yards and three touchdowns. So it's come together for him. What's the score of that game? At least uh, Miami saw, and FSU. I saw, really the, I saw on the ticker um, while, while it was going across the bottom. Trying line. to go watch some good, fo- some good football whenever we get off here. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm going to be watching Jameis tomorrow. I'm going to be watching my Steelers. So. Five What's out of seven, schedule? 219 yards, three touchdowns. Yeah. Who? How? What is it? Five out of seven, two nineteen, three touchdowns. <laughs> over forty oh. yards of completion. <laughs> and they're playing Uh-oh. Virginia, right? Yep. Start yeah, of the second I, quarter. Yeah. I, so that's in one quarter. I think that's as many passing yards as FSU has all season. So uh run down the rest of the schedule real quick, Logan. Uh UNC, uh Lost. UMass. W. <laughs> uh, Clemson, NC yeah. State, L, Miami, W. <laughs> <laughs> that, that game will be broadcast at nine a.m. Uh, on Nickelodeon. ESPN, no, on ESPN eight. The Ocho. Yeah, that's that, that's yeah. gonna be, that's gonna be the. That's the, on Comedy the Central. They, that's gonna be the week they do the uh, ESPN Ocho. It's gonna be on that channel. In between yeah. dodgeball and like. <laughs> Lacquer painting or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, then Florida State goes to Boston College. That, I think that game's going to be interesting because I still think they might lose, but they, uh, you know, they lost their quarterback, which changes that trajectory of the yeah. season for them. Yeah, but at least they have two months to prepare for it. It's not uh, like yeah. it's the week before. Uh, and then you've got uh, Florida, which they had a closest game so far with Alabama mm-hmm. this season. So. But uh, look so, interesting. I mean, we well, all Alabama, oh, six, man. They're, they're getting oh, six, they're getting up to you know these big leads and just checking out. Yeah, I feel like they just kind of just said, "All right, we're done. We'll be all right." Saban's gonna 
explode in the press conference. It's going to be pretty funny. Yeah, no, it is. Well, we uh, gave our instant reaction there. These haven't been so much fun, but I'm glad everybody comes in here to hang out with us and comment and engage and all that kind of stuff. If you're on uh, YouTube right now, hit that like button, subscribe. Appreciate everybody for uh, hanging out with us weekly. We'll be, go- we'll be going live on Wednesday night at 8.30 to give final thoughts on Florida State versus Wake Forest. And then we'll be previewing Louisville and we'll go over quick hitters. We'll talk about last uh, Sunday night foot or Sunday's football games and NFL, college football overall, and a lot of other good things. But well, hopefully, hopefully, we'll be talking. Uh, you know, some 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 changes. We'll see. There might be some entertaining things coming up this upcoming week, and uh, we we should be, and we'll actually have some more coverage too because uh, we'll be we'll be heading into some credentials. So, great I, week to start. With, yep, it's a great week to get after it, baby. It's Woo! fun, historic, historic. I believe 1976 was the last time Florida State started zero. 45 years. Nate wasn't even alive. That's nope. crazy. That was Bobby Bowden's first Nate's season. been alive for a long time. Bobby Bowden's first season. Not so great. Not so great. But, yeah, mm-hmm. thanks, everybody, for watching. Everybody enjoy the rest of y'all's weekend. I always appreciate y'all hanging out with us. We will see you guys on Wednesday night at 830. Everybody take care and be safe. See you guys.